speech, his sixth year pitch, as they call it, was, well, pretty boring, according to the Wall Street Journal. Uh, and his tone was subdued. He said that 2014 was going to be a year of action, but the Wall Street Journal wonders, what about his five previous years? What was he doing then? Uh, and they point out that, uh, uh, well, Obama said that he was going to focus on addressing economic insecurity, but that's pretty ironic because this economic insecurity is due to his own policies. Right. Another thing that they're focusing on is uh, what President Obama said about and that governing by executive order, trying to bypass this divided Congress. That's right. The, the International New York Times in their editorial says that Obama doesn't really have a choice here. The uh, Congress is so divided that it's become a dead end for good policy. So he has to bypass Congress if he actually wants to get anything done. The Daily Beast, meanwhile, uh, focuses on the fact that Republicans have been trying to whip up a frenzy around this threat to use executive orders. But it points out that, well, Obama has actually used very few few executive orders compared to a lot of other presidents. Uh, and actually, with 168 executive orders in his five years, he ranks second from the bottom compared to other post-World War II presidents. The winner of this ranking is actually Franklin Roosevelt with a whopping 3,522 executive orders. So Obama really hasn't used all that many compared to other presidents. And on top of that, the Daily Beast says that Americans really want a president to take action. So this executive order freakout that they call it, that the, the Republicans are doing, isn't really valid in the end. Okay, we'll see if he does take action. Let's move to another story now, and the papers are reacting to the Pakistani Prime Minister saying he wants to hold peace talks with the Taliban. That's right. Let's take a look at The Nation, which is a Pakistani paper that says that these talks are, could go through even though there's been a wave of deadly attacks in recent months. The government is giving one more chance to the Taliban. Uh, and this article points out that Pakistan has really been preparing a sweeping offensive on militant tribal areas in northern Waziristan. Now, the Independent says that this is actually the ultimate uh, ultimatum for uh, the Taliban. This is a last-ditch bid to give peace a chance. And this is the editorial of the Independent that says, you know, the government really should talk to the Taliban. It applauds the Pakistani government for wanting to go through these talks and says that, you know, that is actually the only place to start if the government wants to root out terrorism in Pakistan. OK, and a lot, there's also a lot of focus on the Winter Olympics as they're about to kick off in just one week's time. That's right. High security games uh, in Sochi. Uh, let's take a look at a cartoon in the International New York Times where you can see skiers getting ready to start a race. And the person who's uh, firing the uh, the start starting gun is actually Vladimir Putin himself, and he's surrounded by security guards. So you can check that out in the International New York Times today. But there's an interesting article in Der Spiegel that points out that though the Olympic Games haven't even started. There's already a victor, and that's actually Vladimir Putin himself. Uh, just uh, with just 18 months to go, oh, uh, excuse me, 18 months ago, he appeared very weakened uh, because of these uh, allegations of voting fraud, etc. But thanks to these games, he's really managed to secure his own power and rid himself of his rivals. Okay. Well, and also another thing that's starting very soon, well, in fact, kicks off tomorrow's Chinese New Year celebrations, marks the world's biggest migration, doesn't it? That's right. And that's what China Daily is taking a look at today, just how Chinese people are going to celebrate uh, the Chinese New Year. And uh, you can see here a drawing of a horse because it's going to be the year of the horse. And China Daily wishes a very happy Chinese New Year to its readers. Oh, well, that's very lovely. <laughs> Finally, an interesting article in the International New York Times about what's cool these days in New York. That's right. Now, this might be surprising, especially given the recent wave of French bashing. But according to the International New York Times, what's cool in New York is to learn French. And it points out that a lot of public schools in New York are presenting a, well, dual bilingual programs in French and in English. And this article points out that the French government is actually very active in encouraging uh, these programs because it says that the Franco-American relations are at stake and the bilingualism is very good for people's brains. So oh, there learn you French. Go. Very cool. <laughs> it makes me very cool. Well, in New York, at least. very trendy then, are we? <laughs> and that's smarter, of course. <laughs> All right, thanks very much to you, Florence Villamino, and of course to you, Stephen Carroll, for the business and the press review. We're going to take a short break, but stay with us. When we come back, we'll have a special report as a number of young people leaving Europe to join the battle in the Syrian war continues to grow. A special report coming up in our focus segment. Do stay tuned. <laughs> 